Like Mike Pyle, he's certainly been around a long time and uh, has a lot of great victories to his own name. I feel good about it, you know, especially taking the fight on short notice. You know, I took the fight on less than 19 days notice. So, you know, it's a big step up and it's a big win, you know, and I'm only going to get better. This is only going to further my career and give me more confidence. Was there any hesitancy in taking the fight? And, and how did you feel, hear about the opportunity? Um, no, there wasn't any hesitancy. I heard about the opportunity from the owner of uh, American Top Team, Dan Lambert. Can't thank him enough for getting me this fight, you know. And, you know, I prepared my whole life for this. So, you know, it's just, I'm excited to go out there and perform. How tight was that choke that he had near the, near the end? Was there any concern in you? Were you surprised that he slapped it on? I was definitely surprised. I thought I was in the controlling position. I thought I had a double leg and I was going to come out the back, but then he got it from the side. Uh, it was very tight, you know, but, you know, it's just a testament to my will. You know, you're going to have to put me to sleep in there. It's going to take more than a, a little choke to put me to get me to go away. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight through every position hard, and, you know, you're going to have to put me to sleep in there. Pyle's a tough guy, and you hit him with some hard shots. How surprised were you that he stood up to a lot of those shots? Man, that second round, I hit him with a two-piece, and I and I, I felt it on my hands. I hit him really hard, and I I, I noticed him wobble. I, you know, I thought I was going to get the finish by TKO. I was just, you know, I'm surprised he he uh, he was able to battle through it. But he's a veteran, you know. That's a, that's a, he's been in a lot of tough fights. You know, he's fought a lot of great fighters. So, you know, I, I expected a tough, uh, resilient fighter in Mike Pyle, and you know, it's just it's a, it's a good win. You know, I'm just only getting better from here. When you're getting ready for a fight. I know you're just generally in shape, and then all of a sudden you had 19 days to get ready. What's that, all, like your training all of a sudden just amps up, and do you all of a sudden kind of get nervous, like, oh, I might sprain my toe, oh, my knee now hurts. Does things like that factor into your head? Definitely. I, I didn't do any hard sparring for this camp. You know, I just worked with my buddy, Jorge Masvidal. Can't thank him enough for what he did for me. We just did light sparring the whole camp. You know, it's not like you're just going to go balls to the wall to get ready because I don't want to get hurt. You know, my last fight I was hurt. I broke my foot, you know, before the fight. So I just wanted to be healthy and come into the fight, you know. Before I took the fight, you know, I wasn't really training hard. I was just kind of sitting around doing a little boxing, doing a little strength and conditioning. But, you know, I didn't want to break anything down and, and try and rebuild back up. I was just slowly just, you know, pacing myself and building up a little by little. Let's talk about that cut. It looks like you already got stitched up there. What landed? Uh, it was a headbutt. It was an inadvertent, an inadvertent headbutt in the third round. I came up and I was going down to throw an elbow. And as soon as I was going down to throw an elbow, he was he was bracing up to come up to me, and we just clashed heads. Uh -huh. So it was a headbutt. And did it? I mean, were you wobbled for a second there? Or? No, I wasn't wobbled at all. But I noticed I noticed it started bleeding real quick, and I noticed it was a gash, and you know, it's, it's unfortunate. People often say that when they get cut, you can see it kind of change a fighter. What goes through your head when you get cut? Do you because you can't see it? Do you instantly just I hope it's not big, or does it do anything internally to you, or do you just keep going? Uh, internally, to me, you know, it, it gets me a little bit more fired up. I see my own blood, and I get a little bit more pissed off. You know, it just kind of it made me, a and especially the way it happened. You know, it's different if you threw an elbow or like you threw a punch that made it, but the fact that it happened off the head, but you know, I just kind of got me a little bit more pissed off. You know, you mentioned Dan Lambert. I'm curious, have you been watching The Ultimate Fighter? And uh, do you have any thoughts on his rivalry with Glenn Robinson? <laughs> uh, you know, I was there for most of the taping of the show, so I haven't really been watching it. You know, I, I don't like to get into the drama aspect of fighting. You know, I, I came here to get a belt, you know, so I don't want to really, you know, worry about the drama part. I just want to worry about getting better as a fighter each and every fight. Mm -hmm. You obviously, uh, John Jones is supposed to be the main event of this card. You obviously have a unique uh, relationship and history with him. What did you make of everything that happened to him? Uh, you know, it's unfortunate. You know, he was a really good friend in college. We spent two years in the, sharing a bunk bag together. So I was hoping he was going to be here. I thought we were going to get to have a little, you know, uh, coming together again, you know, like in college when we were winning wrestling matches together. So it kind of sucks that that happened, you know, but, you know, I hope he learns from his mistakes. You know, I, I said on Twitter, you know, he, he you know, it's, it's unfortunate that he hasn't learned from his mistakes. And, you know, that's just, I wasn't trying to take a jab at it. I'm just, you know, I'm just being honest. You know, I wanted to learn from his mistakes and I want him as a person to be able to pull himself out of this. Going from wrestling in college to fighting, is it hard being much, 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 like three more matches less active because in college you can every single week and you can have 12 matches in a day and now you don't is that harder as you to find motivation and such yeah, it's definitely harder man it's like every week you're in wrestling season you're preparing all the time because you know you're gonna have a meet meet me and you're just always preparing for these certain things now it's you're peaking for one event usually like three or four max five a year so it's such a different mindset getting ready for it so i'm still trying to find that that even keel and really make sure i'm making my body and my mind peak because you have to get your body and mind your body can be ready if your mind's not ready and you're not going to perform so i'm trying to find that balance and make sure i'm ready and, and I'm, I'm starting to figure it out i'm only getting better i'm young i got a lot of time
what do you do to start finding that peak? Because a lot of people, I need two months, I need five weeks, I need, how, what do you do to fine tune it, to finally get it? People's advice or just trial and error? Yeah, trial and error. I think I'm learning each and every fight what, what's working for me, what are the things that, you know, are helping me to be more comfortable and more confident on fight week. And, you know, just, you know, just keep practicing those things and, and visualizing and, and everything's going to take care of itself. So you took a short notice fight. Sometimes they give you the opportunity to kind of ask for your next fight a little bit more specifically then. Uh, anybody you want to call out or are you going to give us the old I'll take whoever they give me one? I don't uh, want you to take the old whoever they give me one. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you I want to take who I give you. I don't know who's in the rankings, but I want someone in the top 15. I, I, honestly, I'm being honest. Like, I train with the best guys in the world. I train with Woodley. I train with Law. I know I can beat a lot of those guys up there. So I want to move up the rankings. Whoever's in the top 15, I want a guy right around 15, 14, 13. That's what I came for. I came for the belt, and I'm only going to get better. So whoever's in the rankings, I don't care who it is. I don't look at rankings because I just wear I think, honestly, I'm one of the best fighters in the world right now. I don't have to be ranked to, to know I'm the best fighter in the world. You know, I just, I'm just i just going to keep getting better, and hopefully they give me a ranked guy right around the 15 because uh, I'm definitely good enough to be in there. When you're fighting so well in the gym, like let's use Joe Riggs as the example. Joe Riggs is known as like this mythological creature who is invincible in the gym. And then when he fights in the cage, it's not the same guy. So how do you transition that? Because you're fighting so well with really, really good guys in the gym. And then you show up and some people don't show up and some people do. What is that? I don't know. I think it's different for everybody. You know, I think uh, the mindset, you know, preparation, how, how, guys, how guys prepare. You know, I feel like I'm a tear in the gym. I, I don't feel like I've ever lost a round in the gym. And, and you know, I just, my pressure and, and my will to win in the gym and in fights, you know, I think that's what carries me and, and helps me beat, beat these guys, you know. But I think I train with all these guys, you know. I know where my skills are. So, you know, I just, I want a big fight and I want to keep getting better. And, and you know, I, got, I came in this sport to get that belt, you know. And I, I promise you, before I'm done in this sport, I will have that belt. Thanks, man.